Shalom Shabbata. El bet down dal hawa. We talking about the mean. We talking about Hebrew. All right. We talking about Habaru. All right. The Habaru people. All right. We talking about Hebrew meaning cross. Hebrew meaning of cross. Tau. Tau. El bet. El alif bet. Gam da wa. We talking about Hebrew meaning of cross in Hebrew in Habaru crossing over or cross means exactly that we bear a cross and we also and we also crossed over meaning exactly that to be a Hebrew or Habaru the words cross pass and the true Hebrew or Habaru are derived from the same root all right from the same root in cuneiform that's abr um me abraham was a habaru or hebrew because he crossed over from a culture of idol worshipers into monotheism okay into monotheism remember hawa said el shaddai said come up out of the land come up out from your land and I'm going to send you come up out from your people and I'm going to send you to a land alright from Ur so he came up out of the land remember Abraham's father right was uh was a uh, consultant to to the uh you know to the wicked kings or to the Assyrian kings or to the to Baal basically alright to Baal okay so from Ur of the Chaldeans into a promised land. Alright. So when we talk about Habaru or Hebrew. Okay. We talking about a tile. Cross. Okay. For a sign. Okay. Remember Isaac. A sign. Remember Isaac. A sign. Emmanuel. Alright. So, cross, in the New Testament, the instrument of crucifixion and hence used for the crucifixion of Christ itself. Okay, Ephesians, Hebrews, 1 Corinthians, uh, and Galatians. Uh, the word is also used to denote any severe affliction of trial. Okay, any severe affliction of trial. Alright. Okay, the forms in which the cross is represented are these. Okay, the crux simplex, a simple piece without transom. A crux decusata or Saint Andrew's tau or cross. The crux commissioner or Saint Anthony's tau or cross. The cruce amissa or Latin cross, which was the kind of cross on which our Savior died above our lord's head on a projecting beam was the place was placed the title see crucifixion okay after conversion so-called of constantine the great the cross first came into use as an emblem of christianity all right he pretended at a critical moment that he saw a flaming cross in the heavens bearing the inscription the hawk signal vinces by the sign of that uh, uh, by the sign thou shalt conquer and that all right and that on the following night Christ himself appeared and ordered him to take his stand all right man let's dodge your hijacks on all that all right but we talking about as a child and we when we talking about Melchizedek when we talking about Zadok okay King of Shalom. All right, when he visited Abraham, and we can go over to that later, but he was supposed to reveal a cross to him that Abraham was to carry. So that's in another piece, but and that represents the Ankh. All right, from the high order of angels, the Ankh. All right, so that's something different. That's something for for you know the scholars, but.
we on something else right now. We talking about the tile, all right? And we talking about the sign. So when we get over here to your paleo and picto, what we talking about? Okay, Habar, what we talking about? Okay, we talking about your tile. All right, we talking about your mark, your sign, your signal, your mon monument. So this was prophesized from the old. Okay, so as you can see, for my real Habar, there's always been a tile. Okay, there always been a sign. Okay, there always been a mark. All right, a mark of righteousness. You understand? You overstand. All right, boss. People have been fighting for 400 years. No people do. Sir, I just want you to explain no what you mean do. by that. You know what I'm talking about. Y'all all know what I'm talking about, man. Don't sit up and try to bait. It's not know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what the fuck I talk about when I say these things. Your people too. Explain it. I, and I, everybody knows what you're talking understood. about. Radio Raheem, I don't have to explain what's understood, man. You know what I mean by that. You know what I said by that. I ain't got to go further. And if nobody, if anybody don't understand that, then God be with them. Go look up the history. Go look up the history. Shit, ain't, don't everybody believe in Google? Go Google that shit. See what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, man. You know what I dare you to sit up there and say, explain. You know what I'm talking about, man. It's fighting people. You know we've been fighting 400 and still fighting to this day. To this day. To this day. Why are y'all playing stupid? The people being the boy. Shalom. Shalom. Why y'all out here playing stupid? The people be the movement. Baru, what it do? Shalom, Bani. What it do? Yasharala. Quam, quam, quam. The rest, Yasharala. Why y'all out here being stupid? It's the people of Baru be the movement. All right, what it do? What it do? My people, you understand what it is. This is what it is. What it is is what it do. Shalom. Shalom. Come on, be the foundation. Come on, be the foundation. Who should have missed y'all this year? What it do? What it do with the Ruah? Shalom. We all in here. We all in here. Y'all be knowing that. Y'all be knowing that it's a ball. Y'all be knowing that. This is Priest King. Priest Khan. Quan. What it do? What it do? Alright, so we talking about this Habaru. Talking about you. Talking about you, Hebrew. So, let's check this out. So we know the Habaru. Go all the way back. To Abraham sometimes written as Hapiru okay and more accurately Apiru Aparu Aparu all right meaning now this is a negative connotation you know we always uh, being judged right by our enemies so they call us dusty dirty dusty and dirty Right is a term used in the second millennial BCE text throughout the Fertile Crescent for people variously described as rebels, outlaws, raiders, millennia, uh, mercenaries. Okay, mercenaries, mercenaries. Okay, bowmen, bowmen, servants, slaves, and laborers. Okay, now you see it's a mixture of a plethora of certain type of characters um based on certain events but they all throw in one big gumbo right uh rebels 
outlaws, raiders, mercenaries, bowmen, servants, slaves, laborers, okay? So the point is, is that when we go back to Abraham, we see, all right, Abraham uh, made a confederate with other um, nations, but it was through righteousness. You understand? Through righteousness, for the right, for the good of the people, for the good. And then um, while warring with their own people. So this were people, these were nations that, people and nations, that barred from their own nations of because of the wickedness you understand so anytime wicked would come upon the land they would call the whole bar right meaning that the good part of the nations the good people in the nation will call the 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 hebrews who they had a confederate with such as abraham such as joshua and you understand because the lord had given us the land okay so of these wicked nations it was some decent people in them that understood who our creator was you understand so when it when it refers to the bad nation the bad nation of people all they see is people who used to be their people tuned up with a bunch of other people such as Abraham and Joshua you understand and so that's where the uh, you know, stuff can get lost in the translation. The Amarna Tablets of the Heibairu Conquest The Late Bronze Age collapse between 1200 and 1150 BC was a Dark Age transition period in the Near East Aegean region. North Africa, Caucasus, Balkans and the Eastern Mediterranean from the Late Bronze Age to the Early Iron Age a transition historians believe was violent, sudden and culturally disruptive. The palace economy of the Aegean region and Anatolia that characterised the late Bronze Age disintegrated, transforming into the small isolated village cultures of the Greek Dark Ages. Within a period of 40 to 50 years, at the end of the 13th and the beginning of the 12th century, Almost every significant city in the eastern Mediterranean world was destroyed, many of them never to be occupied again. The Heibairu are variously described as nomadic or semi-nomadic rebels, outlaws, raiders, mercenaries and bowmen, servants, slaves, migrant labourers etc. Some scholars identify them with the early Hebrews. It is quite logical that Shasu or Kasku were Turkic Mongolian nomads, while the Heibairu or Apairu were the Hebrew who were originally from Europe. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, mention of the uh, when it talks about the Hebrews originally from UK, what it's talking about is the uh, the Hebrews in the Caribbeans going over to the UKs because you know from from the Caribbeans, a lot of the a lot of the Hebrews went migrated um, over to the to the UKs to Europe, and so then coming to the Americas. All right. The Great Bronze Age collapse between 1200 and 1150 BC brought these two nomadic groups into alliance against the different indigenous empires of the region. This culminated in the Archimedic Empire in this chassu taking over the Heibairu. This decisive change created the early Jews who displaced the Hebrew Israelites together with the Canaanite Remanites. The 382 Amarna letters represent one of the greatest archaeological proofs that the history of the Bible and the conquest under Joshua of the Promised Land is true. The Heibairu also spelled Apairu are the Hebrews under the command of Joshua who are attacking the ones who are writing the Amarna tablets. The timing of the Amarna tablets happened when these three kings were alive. These are the Egyptian depictions of the Heibairu. Alright, so as we already covered that, so let's check out you know the rest of this. Uh, Haparu, Haparu, 
Abiru in uh, Peru, like I said, with the um, for we know states, I uh, mean, for we know a continent in South America, landmass called Peru. Okay, same as land over in Prussia, Prussia or Russia with Moscow, and it's the same same thing, meaning that same kind of uh, you know incidents where we conquered lands and we name them. So when you talk about Peru would be a later um, a later you know um, application name to the land as originated from Habaru. So Hapiru or Peru would be a later name you know um, a later name with probably maybe Sumerians or you understand meaning a mixture of uh, you know and and landing landing the land, the names of Peru and and um, on the on the islands of uh, South America okay you understand what I'm saying so naming of Peru uh, would be a later but it's originated from the from the people from the Hebrew people from the Habaru people you understand okay so from the original people you understand Haparu or Peru is a later term like Jerusalem or, or, or Prussia Prussia we got spirit per Prussia um, so let me see okay so the word Habaru more properly Hapiru occurs in the hundreds of the second millennium BCE documents covering a 600 period from the 18th century to the 12th century BCE and found at sites ranging from Egypt, Canaan and Syria to Nusi near Kirkuk in North Iraq and Anatolia, Anatolia, Turkey frequently used interchangeably with Samaria okay so when you see this saga Sagas, as we've seen earlier, we know that stands for Sumerian, okay? Uh, phon phonetic, all right? Equivalent to the Arcadian Mesopotamian word Sagus. Sagus, sa Sagasu, okay? Means murderer or destroyer, okay? Because when we came to conquer, we came to murder and destroy. You understood what Joshua did to... Um, to uh to the lands over there but Jericho what did he do to Jericho he shut he shut it down all right so therefore he trampled over Jericho so therefore um when you talk about uh what would they call him murder or destroy okay what would they call as murder or destroy at this specific time in history so um, Arcadian, okay, will be an older term of Sumerian. So Arcadian will really mean Hebrew. You understand? For your ancient Shemitic Hebrew, okay. So Arcadian is the um, Paleo Picto. You understand? So the Sumerian, okay, that will, as you already know, when Sumerian terms, when when you get deep into the real Sumerians, you understand that this is a mixture of. Uh, mixture of tribes mixture of nations but most importantly it's uh some hebrew people in this sumerian tribes okay best believe and know that okay okay so um arcadian would be your your ancient hebrews okay your ancient habaru all right Mesotam mesopotamian uh, or um when you get in Saga Su, you're talking about the Sashu. Um, it would be the same, okay? As the uh, Hobaru, okay? A similar, similar um, uh, cultures and everything. So not all Hobaru were murderers and robbers, says from your enemy, okay? In the 18th century, right, a North Syrian king named Urkab, Urkab Tum, Urkatum, Okay, Urkatom, 1740 BCE, made peace with the warlord of Shemuba. Shemumba, you see, uh, you see a syllable Shem in there, Shemumba, and his Habaru. Okay, 
a north a nor 18th century right a north Syrian king okay Hamblin okay but that sounds familiar with making a Shimbala of Habaru that sounds like the story of Joshua okay so the conclusion in the whole matter is basically there was not a city which made peace with the sons of Yasharala all right with the Obara except the Hivites living in Gibeon okay they took them now even when we go to Joshua we'll be able to, to testify and verify that okay which is true the Hivites in Gibeon okay they took them all in battle for it was of the Lord to harden their hearts to meet Yasharel in battle in order that he might utterly destroy them. Now we're talking about the Jebusites, the Hivites, uh, and um, and basically this is where we took down Jericho. Okay, that's where we took down Jericho. All right, and Ai. All right, for it was of the Lord harden their hearts to meet Yasharel in battle in order that they might utterly destroy them that they might receive no mercy but that he might destroy them because of their idolatry and sin okay Joshua destroying them because of their idolatry and sin just as the Lord had commanded Moshe alright Yahshua utterly destroyed them with their cities alright with their cities so Yahshua took the whole land According to all that the Lord, Hawa, El Shaddai, had spoken to Moshe, and Yahshua gave it for an inheritance to Yasharela. Alright? Okay? According to their divisions by their tribes, thus the land had rest from war. Joshua 11, 19 and 23. And remember, Caleb. Alright? Caleb. Alright? Caleb got some of that land also from he was a Canaanite or a Kerasite or uh, yeah a Kerasite I think it was a, a Canaanite okay which was from the tribe of from of, of Esau okay so understand that that's who got Hebron okay that's who got Hebron once Joshua passed out the land uh, Caleb all right which was a Canaanite Alright, descendants of Esau got Hebron to this day. Alright. So the archers never came because the Pharaoh wisely never sent. Okay, remember the archers was when you get to the later days where the Roman armies, I mean Roman captains, their archers are captains of a of a hundred men. Captains of, of, of armies that have a hundred and more men. So the archers, they were calling for the archers to come save them, but the pharaohs wisely never sent for the archers okay because it was prophecy he had seen the power of the hebrew or the habara god in the ten plagues the crossing of the red sea the power of mount sinai the miracle of manna etc the armana tablets are an incredible second witness to the conquest of the promised land under the command of yahshua of joshua Okay, be assured that the Amana letters are indeed true record, true record of the Obaro, the Hebrew, Yasharela, conquest, all right, but, okay, you understand, all right, but even when Abraham, of his conquest, you got to say it was Obaro, for it wasn't Israel yet, but, hey man, really, you putting it all together, so it's beautiful, all right, that's what we're here to do, just put it all together, so it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Um, so yeah, so man, we gon we gon we gonna stay way up because we gonna check out at the end of the video we wanna check out all the letters. So I made this like a short video to introduce these letters because I had to actually pay for these letters. Okay, this guy reading it to you, reading these letters to you, I can only find these letters in, in one place so far. So this guy reading it to you, I actually had to buy them. All right, the Amana letters, these Egyptian provinces, kings writing about this Abara coming to destroy them. All right, taking over. All right, and he's talking about how they didn't speak a word. And we're going we're gonna to hit you over the head with that, with that real truth, too, about how when um, Joshua took over Jericho, we didn't speak a word. 
all right he told us not to speak a word so we were silent silent it was a silent destruction of jericho okay so man we're gonna hit you over the head with that but we had to get in these amana letters because they might disappear over the internet but i got them on record so it's a beautiful thing all right so y'all uh stay way up man and um uh, we're gonna check out these letters at the end of the video so y'all stay tuned all right all right so while the apiru or e e Ebrium or Idrimi or Elalak -El -El was the son of a disposed king and formed a band of Haparu to make himself king of Alalak. Okay, what Idrimi shared with the other Aparu was membership of an inferior social class of outlaws, mercenaries, and slaves leading as a marginal and sometimes lawless existence on the fringes of settled society okay because remember we talk about the nomads some of us uh you know you understand that we hit you over here before israelites did they didn't just all do one thing so you had some that settled some that were nomads okay so you had some that traveled the wilderness some traveled the desert some stayed where they were at for a while then would move Stay there for a while, then we'll move, you understand? Okay, um, because we always had, you know, enemies, you understand? So we all, and we always listened to the Creator, and He told us where to go when it was safe, okay? A power was membership of inferior class of social outlaws, mercenary and slave, leading to a marginal and sometimes lawlessness existence of the, on the fringes, fewer fringes, of the settled society okay meaning that we weren't in the societies okay so when you talk about somebody coming through we weren't in the societies okay we were on the outside of them on the outskirts of the society so that's why they called us unruly because we weren't dealing with you know the systematic things okay so aparu had no common ethnic affiliations okay because when you talk about uh when we taking over some land and then we get you guys to uh you know to turn on your own people because of righteousness though okay turn on the bad of your nations the bad people of your nations then then that means when you come when we come and you on the side of us fighting with your own nation right Amorites on the side of us fighting with their own nation right right and we could see that's historically in the Bible Abraham Joshua right Right, so and slaves being the marginal and sometimes lawlessness existence of the fringes of settled society, and the Piru had no name common ethnic affiliation, no common ethnic affiliations, and no common language. Okay, their personal names being most frequently West Shemitic, West Shemitic, but many East Shemitic, all right, Hurrian or Indo European. Okay. Now you know he's talking about not no, uh, yeah, uh, Indo European, but Dodge or hijack because we talking about you know something that led up to the British Isles with the um, with the Hebrew descendants. All right, so, um, going over to the um, to the uh, to the Europeans, okay, to the Europeans, man. So you got to understand that that that. Um, Hebrews is a collective of Shem, man. This is a baru, okay? Alright, so. So. In the Tikuna Ni prism from Anatolia, dating from around 1550 BC, the names of 438 Habaru soldiers were given. The majority of them had Hurrian names. The rest being Shemitic. Okay, the rest being Shemitic. Okay. In the Armana tablets from the 14th century BCE, the petty kings of Canaan described them sometimes as outlaws, sometimes as mercenaries, sometimes as day laborers and servants. Okay. Usually they are socially marginal, but Rib Hada of the Biblos called 
Abdi Ashurda of Amoru, modern Lebanon, and his son Aparu, okay, which the implication that they have rebelled against their common overlord, the Pharaoh, in the conquest of Jaffa, okay, modern Jaffa, an Egyptian work of a historical fiction from around 1440 BCE, they appeared as brigands and general Dehudi. Alright, Dehudi asked at one point that his horses be taken inside the city lest they be stolen by passing a purr. Okay. The biblical word Hebrew, like a borrow, denotes a social category, not the ethnical group, okay, which is, uh, it's not true, okay. A biblical word Hebrew is first and foremost ethnical, okay. Now, just because you've seen it at, when, at war times of social because we had gatherings of other nations, um, you know, at war time. You understand? Do you understand war? If you understand war, then you know that. So, during the time of war, we were called the Hobaru, okay? Because we were moving in on the Father, moving in because of the Father, and with that, we had His blessing. So, we were annihilating, annihilating kings and nations. So, a lot of fear in their eyes took place, so of course they bowed down course they bowed down and fought against their own descendants their own people so to you yeah we would look like how you say um how you say we were um <coughs> composed of many different peoples you know what i'm saying so you can say that but but those Amorites knew who the Habaru was. Okay? Those Jebusites, those uh Gimenites, those Hivites, Gargasites, they all knew who the Habaru was. So like we say, you know, they don't want you to connect. You know, they want you to go to jail for saying Israelite. You know what I'm saying? They want you to go to jail. They want to send you to jail for saying Israelite. So they don't want you to connect your Hebrew you know, with the Habaru. They want you to go to jail for saying Hebrew. You know, they trying to send us to jail, to prison. You understand? Calling us terrorists for saying the word Hebrew and saying the word uh, Israelite. But I'm letting my people know we are the Habaru. Okay, the name has come back. Your name is being unlocked. All right, so it's a beautiful thing. Um, it's a beautiful thing. And um, they also appear to be composed of many different peoples, including nomadic Shashu and Shutu, the biblical Midianites, Kenites, and Amalekites, as well as displaced peasants, peasants, and pastoralites. Okay, scholars such as Anson Rainey have noted, however, as while as Aparu covered the regions of Nusi and Anatolia, as well as the northern Syria. Cain and Egypt, okay, they were never confused with Shutu, Sutu, or Sashu, okay, and you see they don't say the Americas, right, why is that, you know, I mean, just keep it real, because that's where you at right now, that's why, so they don't include America because they know that's where you at, they don't include the Americas, because they, they know that's where the Habaru people are, so man, you, you can play dumb, or you can be smart about the situation, you feel me, so, Quam uh, Yashirada. Ripada says to his Lord, King of all countries, Great King, may the Lady of Gubla grant power to the King, my Lord. I fall at the feet of my Lord, my son seven times and seven times. May the king, my lord, know that Gubla, the loyal maidservant of the king, is safe and sound. The war, however, 
of the Apiru forces against me is extremely severe, and so may the king, my lord, not neglect some lest everyone be joined to the Apiru forces. Through the king's commissioner who is in summer, Gubla is alive. Bahamnata, the commissioner of the king who is in summer, knows the straits, Manas that Gubla is in. It is from the land of Yaramuta that we have acquired provisions. The war against us is extremely severe, and so may the king not neglect his cities. Ripada says to the king of all countries, Great king, king of battle, may the lady of Gubla grant power to the king, my lord. I fall at the feet of my lord, my son, seven times and seven times. May the king, my lord, know that the war of Abdiasir to against me is severe. He wants to take for himself the two cities that have remained to me. Moreover, what is Abdiasirta, the dog, that he strives to take all the cities of the king, the son, for himself is he the king of Mitanna, or the king of Kasu, that he strives to take the land of the king for himself. He has just gathered together all the Apiru against Saigatu and Anpi, and he himself has taken these two cities. I said, there is no place where men can enter against him. He has ceased so send me a garrison of four hundred men and ex pairs of horses with all speed. It is thus that I keep writing to the palace, but you do not reply to me. For years archers would come out to inspect the country, and yet now that the land of the king and summer, your garrison city, have been joined to the Apiru, you have done nothing. Send a large force of archers that it may drive out the king's enemies and all lands be joined to the king. Moreover, you are a great lord. You must not neglect this message. To hire, the vizier, message of Ripada. I fall at your feet. May Aman, the god of the king, no lord, establish to your honor in the presence of the king, your lord. You are a wise man, the king knows this and because of your wisdom he sent you as commissioner. Why have you been negligent, not speaking to the king so he will send archers to take summer? What is Abdiasirta, servant and dog, that he takes the land of the king for himself? What is his auxiliary force that it is strong? Through the ape era his auxiliary force is strong. So send me fifty pairs of horses and two hundred infantry that I may resist him in Saigatu until the coming forth of the archers. Let him not gather together all the Apiru so he can take Saigatu and Anpi, and seize. What shall I be able to do? There will be no place where men can enter against him. To Amanapa, my father, message of Ripada, your son. I fall at the feet of my father. May the Lady of Gubla establish your honor in the presence of the king, your lord. Why have you been negligent, not speaking to the king, your lord, so that you may come out together with archers and fall upon the land of Amaru? If they hear of archers coming out, they will abandon their cities and desert. Do not you yourself know that the land of Amaru follows the stronger party? Look, they are not now being friendly to Abdiasirta. What will he do to them? and so they are longing two day and night for the coming out of the archers, and they say, let us join them. All the mares long for this to be done to Abdiasirta. Since he sent a message to the men of Amur, kill your lord and join the Apiru. Accordingly, the mares say, he will do the same thing to us, and all the lands will be joined to the Apiru. Report this matter in the presence of the king, your lord, for you are father and lord to me and to you I have turned. You know my conduct when you were in summer, I am your loyal servant. So speak to the king, your lord, that an auxiliary force be sent to me with all speed. Ripada says to his lord, king of all countries, great king, king of battle colon two may the lady of Gubla grant power to the king, my lord. I fall at the feet of my lord, my son, seven times and seven times. May the king, the Lord, know that Gubla, the loyal maidservant of the king since the days of his ancestors, is safe and sound. The king, however, has now withdrawn his support of his loyal city. May the king inspect the tablets of his father's house for the time when the ruler in Gubla was not a loyal servant. Do not be negligent of your servant. Behold, the war of the Apiru against me is severe and, as the gods of your land are alive, 
our sons and daughters as well as we ourselves are gone since they have been sold in the land of Yaramuta for provisions to keep us alive. For lack of a cultivator, my field is like a woman without a husband. All my villages that are in the mountains, ha ar along the sea have been joined to the Apiru. Left to me are Gubla and two towns. After taking Saigata for himself, Abdiasata said to the men of Amur, Kill your leader and then you will be like us and at peace. They were won over, following his message, and they are like Apiru. So now Abdiasata has written to the troops, Assemble in the temple of Ninad to Komaten and then let us fall upon Gubla. Look, there is no one that will save it from us. Then let us drive out the mares from the country that the entire country be joined to the Apiru. To the entire country. Then will our sons and daughters be at peace forever. Should even so the king come out, the entire country will be against him and what will he do to us? Accordingly, they have made an alliance among themselves and, accordingly, I am very, very afraid, since in fact there is no one who will save me from them. Like a bird in a trap, Kilubai cage, so am I in Gubla. Why have you neglected your country? I have written like this to the palace, but you do not heed my words. Look, Amanapa is with you. Ask him. He is the one that knows and has experienced the straits I am in. May the king heed the words of his servant. May he grant provisions for his servant and keep his servant alive so I may guard his loyal city, along with Our Lady and our gods, for you. May the king visit this land and his servant. May he give thought to his land. Pacify your land. May it seem good in the sight of the king, my lord. May he send a man of his to stay this time so I may arrive in the presence of the king, my lord. It is good for me to be with you. What can I do by myself? This is what I long for day and night. Ribhada writes to his lord, king of all countries, great king, may the lady of Gubla grant power to the king, my lord. I fall at the feet of my lord, my son, seven times and seven times. As to the king, my lords, writing me. Guard yourself, what is to guard me? Consider that with my ancestors there was a garrison of the king, and provisions from the king were at their disposal, but in my case, there are no provisions or garrison of the king for me. And as the war against me is very severe, the sons of Abdiasata have said to the Apiru and the men who have joined them, what is there with Ripada? So give thought to your servant and let me tell my lord. I wrote to the king, my lord, send archers. Did they not take in a day the lands for the king, your father? Now, may the king heed the words of his servant and send archers to take the land of the king for the king, that you may give peace in the lands to the king's mares. Have they not been killed like dogs, and you have done nothing? Moreover, if the king, my lord, loves his servant, then may he fetch his servant to himself. Ripada says to his lord, before the king of all countries, great king, at the feet of my lord, my son, I fall seven times and seven times. I have written repeatedly to you. The war is against Ardat, against Turkat, and against, and Amir and Saigata, loyal cities of the king, but the king, my lord, has done nothing. Moreover, what is he, Abdiasrati, the servant and dog, that he has acted as he pleased in the lands of my lord, and yet the king, my lord, has done nothing for his servant. Moreover, I sent my messenger each time that he took my cities and moved up against me. Now he has taken Batrana, and he has moved up against me. But all the city he has, the entrance of the gate of Gubla. How long has he not moved from the gate, and so we are unable to go out into the countryside? Moreover, look, he strives to seize Gubla and, and may the king, my lord, give heed to the words of his servant, and may he hasten with all speed chariots and troops eight that they may guard the city of the king, my lord, and, until the arrival of the king, my lord. For my part, I will not neglect the word of my lord. But if the king, my lord, does not give heed to the words of his servant, then Gubla will be joined to him, and all the lands of the king, as far as Egypt, will be joined to the Apiru. Moreover, should my lord not have word brought to his servant by tablet, with all speed, then, 
the city to him and I will request a town from him to stay in, and so I will stay al Fori. Moreover, may the king, my lord, hasten the troops and chariots that they may guard the city of the king, my lord. Look, Gubla is not like the other cities, Gubla is a loyal city of the king, my lord, from most ancient times. Still, the messenger of the king of Akka is honored more than my messenger, for they furnished him with a horse. May he furnish him my messenger. With two horses. May he not come out empty-handed. To Amanapa, my father, message of Ribhada, your son. I fall at your feet. May Aman, the god of the king, your lord, and the lady of Gubla establish your honor in the presence of the king, your lord. As to your writing me for copper and for sinew, may the lady of Gubla be witness, there is no copper or sinew of copper available to me or to her unjustly treated ones. Milke you overlaid one with, but I gave his sinew to the ruler of Tyre for my provisions. You yourself should know the straits I am in. Why have you been negligent? Who moves against the country? You do not speak to your lord so he will send you at the head of the archers to drive off the Apiri from the mares. If this year no archers come out, then all lands will be joined to the Apiru. If the king, my lord, is negligent and there are no archers, then let a ship fetch the men of Gubla, your men, and the gods to bring them all the way to you so I can abandon Gubla. Look, I am afraid the peasantry will strike me down. Say to the king, my lord, message of Ribhada, your servant. I fall at the feet of my lord, my son, seven times and seven times. Be informed that the war against me is severe. He has taken all my cities, Gubla alone remains to me. I was in Saigatu and I wrote to you, give thought to your city lest Abdiasar to take it. But you did not listen to me. Then from Batrana I wrote to you, send men to take the city for you. My words went unheeded, and they were not taken to heart. Now they have taken my cities. Moreover, that Dogi's in Mitana, but his eye is on Gubla. What can I do by myself? You yourself have been negligent of your cities so that the Apiru dog takes them. It is to you that I have turned. Moreover, all the mares are at peace with Abdiya Sertl. Our sons, our daughters, the furnishings of the houses are gone, since they have been sold in the land of Yaramuta for for provisions to keep us alive. Like a bird in a trap, so am I in Gubla. For lack of a cultivator my field is like a woman without a husband. Moreover, send X men and thirty pairs of horses that I may guard the city for you. And your messengers send, and if you do not send a garrison, then. I am afraid for my life. And all messengers that were bound have been released. Do not be negligent. Send archers that they may take the land of Amaru. Day and night everyone awaits the coming forth of the archers. I have been plundered of my grain, and it is to you that I have turned. Say to the king, my lord, message of Ribhada, your servant. I fall at the feet of my lord seven times and seven times. May the lady of Gubla grant power to the king, my lord. I keep writing like this to the palace the war against me, and so may the king give a garrison to his servant. Moreover, I have litigation. Send the commissioner, let him hear my case. And give me my due, or, on the other hand, let the king take from the mares anything of mine for himself. Moreover, the war against me is severe, and so there are no provisions for the peasantry. Look! They have gone off to the sons of a deserter, to Sidon and Beirut. As the sons of Abdi assert are hostile to the king, and Sidon and Beirut do not belong any longer to the king, send the commissioner to take them. Lest I abandon the city and go off to you. Look, if the peasantry goes off, the Apiru will seize the city. Seeing that my only purpose is to serve the king in accordance with the practice of my ancestors, may the king send archers and pacify them. As for the mayors, since the cities are theirs and they are at peace, they do not keep writing to the king. It is against me and against Yan Harmer that there is war. Look, previously the commissioner at summer would decide between us, but now no mayor listens to him. The king has no servant like Yan Harmer, a loyal servant. Say to Amanapa, 
My father, message of Ripada, your son. I fall at the feet of my father. I have said to you again and again, are you unable to rescue me from Abdi Asurta? All the Apiru are on his side, and as soon as the mares hear anything, they write to him. Accordingly, he is strong. You ordered me again and again, send your man to me at the palace, and as soon as the request arrives, I will send him along with an auxiliary force, until the archers come out, to protect your life. But I told you, I am unable to send him. Let not Abdi Asurta hear about it, or he would rescue me from him. You said to me, do not fear you ordered me again and again, send a ship to the land of Yaramuta so silver and clothing can get out to you from them. All the men whom you gave me have run off. The legal violence done to me is your responsibility, if you neglect me. Now I have obeyed. Is it not a fact that I sent my man to the palace, and he gave orders to a man and he attacked me with a bronze dagger? I was stabbed nine times he is strong through this crime, and from another crime what could rescue me? If within two months there are no archers, then I will abandon the city, go off, and my life will be safe while I do what I want to do. Moreover, do not you yourself know that the land of Amar longs day and night for the archers? Has it not been distressed, have they not been angry? So tell the king, come with all haste. Moreover, why is the war against the king? Is it not higher? Now, the ships of the army are not to enter the land of Amaru, for they have killed Abdi Asurta, since they had no wool and he had no garments of lapis lazuli or marstone color, to give as tribute to the land of Mitana. Moreover, whose ships have attacked me? Is it not the men of Awada? Indeed, they are now with you. Seize the ships of the men of Awada that are with you in Egypt. Moreover, though Haya says, if we do not give it to the land of Amaru, then the men of Tyre and the men of Sidon and the men of Beirut will furnish it, to whom do these cities belong? Is it not to the king? Put a man in each city and let him not allow a ship from the land of Amaru to enter, for they have killed Abdi Asurta. It was the king that placed him over them, not they. Let the king tell the three cities and the ships of the army not to go to the land of Amaru. If a servant sees a boat, let him give it to you. Be informed of the affairs of your loyal servant. Say to the king, My lord, my god, my son, the breath of my life, thus Zimredi, the mayor of Sidon. I fall at the feet of my lord, god, son, breath of my life, at the feet of my lord, my god, my son, the breath of my life seven times and seven times. May the king, my lord, Know that Sidon, the maidservant of the king, my lord, which he put in my charge, is safe and sound. And when I heard the words of the king, my lord, when he wrote to his servant, then my heart rejoiced, and my head went high, and my eyes shone, at hearing the words of the king, my lord. May the king know that I have made preparations before the arrival of the archers of the king, my lord. I have prepared everything in accordance with the command of the king, my lord. May the king, my lord, know that the war against me is very severe. All the cities that the king put in my charge, have been joined to the ape Hiru. May the king put me in the charge of a man that will lead the archers of the king to call to account the cities that have been joined to the ape Hiru, so you can restore them to my charge that I may be able to serve the king, my lord, as our ancestors did before. To the king, my lord, my god, my son, message of Abi Milku, your servant. I fall at the feet of the king, my lord, seven times and seven times. I am the dirt under the sandals of the king, my lord. My lord is the sun who comes forth over all lands day by day, according to the way of being of the sun, his gracious father, who gives life by his sweet breath and returns with his north wind, who establishes the entire land in peace, by the power of his arm, Hapsi, who gives forth his cry in the sky like Baal, and all the land is frightened at his cry. The servant herewith writes to his lord that he heard the gracious messenger of the king who came to his servant, and the sweet breath that came forth from the mouth of the king, my lord, to his servant, his breath came back before the arrival of the messenger of the king, my lord, breath had not come back 
My nose was blocked. Now that the breath of the king has come forth to me, I am very happy and, Aryu he is satisfied, day by day. Because I am happy, does the earth not prosper when I heard the gracious messenger from my lord, all the land was in fear of my lord, when I heard the sweet breath and the gracious messenger who came to me. When the king, my lord, said, Kuna prepare before the arrival of a large army, then the servant said to his lord, yes, yes, yes. On my front and on, Surya my back I carry the word of the king, my lord. Whoever gives heed to the king, his lord, and serves him in his place, the sun comes forth over him, and the sweet breath comes back from the mouth of his lord. If he does not heed the word of the king, his lord, his city is destroyed, his house is destroyed, never again does his name exist in all the land. But look at the servant who gives heed to his lord. His city prospers, his house prospers, his name exists forever. You are the sun who comes forth over me, and a brazen wall set up for him, and because of the powerful arm, I am at rest, I am confident. I indeed said to the sun, the father of the king, my lord, when shall I see the face of the king, my lord? I am indeed guarding Tyre, the principal city, for the king, my lord, until the powerful arm of the king comes forth over me to give me water to drink and wood to warm myself. Moreover, Zimreda, the king of Sidon, writes daily to the rebel Aziru, the son of Abdi Azratu, about every word he has heard from Egypt. I hear with right to my lord, and it is good that he knows. To the king, my lord, my god, my son, message of Abi Milku, your servant. I fall at the feet of the king, my lord, seven times and seven times, the king, my lord, has written for glass. I give to the king, my lord, what I have on hand, one hundred units in weight. May the king, my lord, give his attention to his servant and give you suit to his servant so he can drink a jug, water. May the king, my lord, give ten palace attendants to guard his city in order that I may enter and see the face of the king, my lord. My presence will be as pleasing to the king, my lord, as when the king, my lord, charged me with the guarding of his city. I write to the king, my lord, because every day the king of Sidon has captured a palace attendant of mine. May the king give attention to his servant, and may he charge his commissioner to give you suit to his servant for water, for fetching wood, for straw, for clay. Since he has acted hostilely, has he not violated the oath? There is not another palace attendant. The one who raids the land of the king is the king of Sidon. The king of Hajura has abandoned his house and has aligned himself with the ape Hiru. May the king be concerned about the palace attendants. These are treacherous fellows. He has taken over the land of the king for the ape Hiru. May the king ask his commissioner, who is familiar with Canaan. To the king, my lord, message of attack armor, your servant. I fall at the feet of my lord, my son, seven times plus seven. My lord, I am your servant, but the wicked Bertriawaza has gone on defaming me in your sight, my lord, and when he was defaming me in your sight, then he took my entire paternal estate along with the land of Kidsu, and sent my cities up in flames. But, I assure you, the commissioners of the king, my lord, and his magnates know my loyalty, since I said to the magnate Pueru, may the magnate Pueru know that. To the king, my lord, my son, my god, message of Biawa, your servant. I fall at the feet of the king, my lord, my son, my god, seven times and seven times, on the stomach and on the back. Should Yanharma not be here within this year, all the lands are lost to the ape Hiru. So give life to your lands. Say to the king, my lord and my son and my god, message of Biridiyu, the loyal servant of the king. I fall at the feet of the king, my lord and my son and my god, seven times and seven times. I have obeyed the orders of the king, my lord and my son, and I am indeed guarding Majida, the city of the king, my lord, day and night. By day I guard it from the fields with chariots, and by night on the walls of the king, my lord. And as the warring of the Apira in the land is severe, may the king, my lord, take cognizance of his land. 
say to the king, My lord and my son, message of Biri Diyur, your loyal servant. I fall at the feet of the king, my lord and my son, seven times and seven times. I have heard the message of the king, and indeed you are. May the king, my lord, know. The two sons of Labayu have indeed given their money to the Apiru and to the Sutians in order to wage war against me. May the king take cognizance of his servant. To the king, my lord and my son, thus Labayu, your servant and the dirt on which you tread. I fall at the feet of the king, my lord and my son, seven times and seven times. I have obeyed the orders that the king wrote to me. Who am I that the king should lose his land on account of me? The fact is that I am a loyal servant of the king. I am not a rebel and I am not delinquent in duty. I have not held back my payments of tribute, I have not held back anything requested by my commissioner. He denounces me unjustly, but the king, my lord, does not examine my alleged act of rebellion. Moreover, my act of rebellion is this, when I entered Gazru, I kept on saying, everything of mine the king takes, but where is what belongs to Milkalu? I know the actions of Milkalu against me. Moreover, the king wrote for my son. I did not know that my son was consorting with the ape Hiru. I herewith hand him over to Adipa. Moreover, how, if the king wrote for my wife, how could I hold her back? How, if the king wrote to me, put a bronze dagger into your heart and die, how could I not execute the order of the king? Say to the king, my lord and my son, message of Birid Diyur, the loyal servant of the king. I fall at the feet of the king, my lord and my son, seven times and seven times. May the king, my lord, know that since the return to Egypt of the archers, Labayu has waged war against me. We are thus unable to do the plucking, harvesting, and we are unable to go out of the city gate, because of Labayu. When he learn archers were not coming out, he immediately determined to take Majida. May the king save his city lest Labayu seize it. Look, the city is consumed by pestilence, by so may the king give a garrison of one hundred men to guard his city lest Labayu seize it. Look, Labayu has no other purpose. He seeks simply the seizure of Majida. To the king, my lord, my god, the sun, the sun from the sky, message of Yapo, the ruler of Gazru, your servant, the dirt at your feet, the groom of your horses. Truly I fall at the feet of the king, my lord, my god, my son, the sun from the sky, seven times and seven times, on the stomach and on the back. I have listened to the words of the messenger of the king, my lord, very carefully. May the king, my lord, the sun from the sky, take thought for his land. Since the Apiru are stronger than we, may the king, my lord, give me his help, and may the king, my lord, get me away from the Apiru lest the Apiru destroy us. To the king, my lord, my god, my son, the sun from the sky, message of Yapo, the ruler of Gazru, your servant, the dirt at your feet, the groom of your horses. I prostrate myself at the feet of the king, my lord, the sun from the sky, seven times and seven times, both on the stomach and on the back. Whatsoever the king, my lord, has said to me, I have listened to very carefully. I am a servant of the king and the dirt at your feet. May the king, my lord, be informed that my younger brother, having become my enemy, entered my zoo and pledged himself to the ape Hiru. As Dana is at war with me, take thought for your land. May my lord write to his commissioner with regard to this deed. Say to the king, my lord, my god, my son, message of Milkalu, your servant, the dirt at your feet. I fall at the feet of the king, my lord, seven times and seven times. May the king, my lord, know that the war against me and against Suadata is severe. So may the king, my lord, save his land from the power of the ape Hiru. Otherwise, may the king, my lord, send chariots to fetch us lest our servants kill us. Moreover, may the king, my lord, ask Yan Hamu, his servant, about what is being done in his land. To the king, my lord, message of Suadata, your servant. I fall at the feet of the king, my lord. 
I fall seven times and seven times more, both on the stomach and on the back. Be informed, O king, my lord, that all the lands of the king, my lord, have been taken away. I am all alone. As Ramanu, who inspected the lands of the king, my lord, has departed, there is no one for the king. May the king, my lord, take me. I wrote to the king, my lord, he knows. May the king, my lord, send still. May the king, my lord, send forth his powerful hand. Say to the king, my lord, my son, my god, message of Suadata, your servant, the servant of the king and the dirt at your feet, the ground you tread on. I prostrate myself at the feet of the king, my lord, the sun from the sky, seven times and seven times, both on the stomach and on the back. May the king, my lord, be informed that the ape Hiru that rose up, against the lands, the god of the king, my lord, gave to me, and I smote him. And may the king, my lord, be informed that all my brothers have abandoned me. Only Abdi Haber and I have been at war with the ape Hiru. Zurata, the ruler of Akka, and Indaruta, the ruler of Aksapa, these two also have come to my aid, have been summoned to help with fifty chariots, and now they are on my side in the war. So may it seem right in the sight of the king, my lord, and may he send Yan Hama so that we may all wage war and you restore the land of the king, my lord, to its borders, up as high. Say to the king, my lord, message of Abdi Haber, your servant. I fall at the feet of my lord, the king, seven times and seven times. What have I done to the king, my lord? They denounce me, I am slandered before the king, my lord, Abdi Haber has rebelled against the king. His lat, as far as I am concerned, neither my father nor my mother put me in this place, but the strong arm of the king brought me into my father's house, why should I of all people commit a crime against the king, my lord? As truly as the king, my lord, lives, I say to the commissioner of the king, my lord, why do you love the ape Hiru but hate the mares? Accordingly, I am slandered before the king, my lord. Because I say, lost are the lands of the king, my lord, accordingly I am slandered before the king, my lord. May the king, my lord, know that through the king, my lord, stationed a garrison here, in Hama has taken it all away. Now, O king, my lord, there is no garrison, and so may the king provide for his land. May the king provide for his land. All the lands of the king, my lord, have deserted. Ilimilku has caused the loss of all the land of the king, and so may the king, my lord, provide for his land. For my part, I say, I would go into the king, my lord, and visit the king, my lord, but the war against me is severe, and so I am not able to go into the king, my lord. And may it seem good in the sight of the king, and may he send a garrison so I may go in and visit the king, my lord. In truth, the king, my lord, lives, whenever the commissioners have come out, I would say to them, lost are the lands of the king, but they did not listen to me. Lost are all the mares, there is not a mare remaining to the king, my lord. May the king turn his attention to the archers so that archers of the king, my lord, come forth. The king has no lands. That ape Pyre has plundered all the lands of the king. If there are archers this year, the lands of the king, my lord, will remain. But if there are no archers, lost are the lands of the king, my lord. To the scribe of the king, my lord, message of Abdi Haber, your servant. Present eloquent words to the king, my lord. Lost are all the lands of the king, my lord. Say to the king, my lord, message of Abdi Haber, your servant. I fall at the feet of my lord seven times and seven times. Consider the entire affair. Milkalu and Targi brought troops into Kiltu against me. Consider the deed that they did to your servant. Arrows they brought into Kiltu. May the king know that all the lands are at peace with one another, but I am at war. May the king provide for his land. Consider the lands of Gazru, as Kaluna, and Lakwasi. They have given them food, oil, and any other requirement. So may the king provide for archers and send the archers against men that commit crimes against the king, my lord. 
If this year there are archers, then the lands and the mares will belong to the king, my lord. But if there are no archers, then the king will have neither lands nor mares. Consider Jerusalem. This neither my father nor my mother gave to me. The strong hand, arm of the king gave it to me. Consider the deed. This is the deed of Milkalu and the deed of the sons of Labayu, who have given the land of the king to the ape Hiru. Consider, O king, my lord. I am in the right. With regard to the Kassites, may the king make inquiry of the commissioners. Though the house is well fortified, they attempted a very serious crime. They took their tools, and I had to seek shelter by a support for the roof. And so if he is going to send troops into Jerusalem, let them come with a garrison for regular service. May the king provide for them, all of the land might be in dire straits on their account. May the king inquire about them. Let there be much food, much oil, much clothing, until Poru, the commissioner of the king, comes up to Jerusalem. Gone is Adi, but together with the garrison of soldiers that the king provided. May the king know that Adi said to me, Behold, he has dismissed me. Do not abandon it, and send this year a garrison, and send right here the commissioner of the king. I sent as gifts to the king, my lord, ex-prisoners, five thousand, seventeen and eight porters for the caravans of the king, my lord, but they have been taken in the countryside, Sada Fori of Luna. May the king, my lord, know that I am unable to send a caravan to the king, my lord. For your information. As the king has placed his name in Jerusalem forever, he cannot abandon it. The land of Jerusalem. Say to the scribe of the king, my lord, message of Abdi Haber, your servant. I fall at your feet. I am your servant. Present eloquent words to the king, my lord, I am a soldier of the king. I am always yours and please make the Kassites responsible for the evil deed. I was almost killed by the Kassites in my own house. May the king make an inquiry in their regard. May the king, my lord, provide for them. Seven times and seven times may the king, my lord, provide for me. To the king, my lord, my god, my son, the sun from the sky, message of Yadur, your servant, the dirt at your feet the groom of your horses. I indeed prostrate myself, on the back and on the stomach, at the feet of the king, my lord, seven times and seven times. I am indeed guarding the place of the king, my lord, and the city of the king, in accordance with the command of the king, my lord, the sun from the sky. As to the king, my lords, having ordered some glass, I herewith send to the king, my lord, thirty pieces of glass. Moreover, who is the dog that would not obey the orders of the king, my lord, the sun from the sky, the sun of the sun, whom the sun loves? To the king, my lord, my god, my son, the sun from the sky, message of Zimredi, the ruler of Lachisa, your servant, the dirt at your feet. I prostrate myself at the feet of the king, my lord, the sun from the sky, seven times and seven times. As to the messenger of the king, my lord, whom he sent to me, I have listened to his orders very carefully, and I am indeed making preparations in accordance with his order. Say to the king, my lord, message of Sipti Balu, your servant and the dirt at the feet of the king, my lord. I fall at the feet of the king, my lord, my god, my son, seven times and seven times, at the feet of the king, my lord. May the king, my lord, know that I have heard all the words of the king, my lord. Moreover, note, too, that Yan Hamu is the loyal servant of the king and the dirt at the feet of the king. Moreover, may the king, my lord, know that the city of the king where I am is safe and sound. Say to the magnate, message of Papu, I fall at your feet. May you know that Sipti Balu and Zimreda are acting disloyally together, and Sipti Balu said to Zimreda, the fours seas of the town of Yarama have written to me. Give me one hundred and fifteen bows, three daggers, and three swords. Look, I am about to sally forth against the land of the king, and you are in league with me. To be sure, he rejects the charge of disloyalty to the king, saying, The one who is disloyal is Papu, so send him to tend me. 
I now send Rabinu. He will certainly answer him in this matter. Say to the king, My lord, my son, message of Abdi Haba, your servant. I fall at the feet of the king, my lord, seven times and seven times. Behold, the king, my lord, has placed his name at the rising of the sun and at the setting of the sun. It is, therefore, impious what they have done to me. Behold, I am not a mayor, I am a soldier of the king, my lord. Behold, I am a friend of the king and a tribute bearer of the king. It was neither my father nor my mother, but the strong arm of the king that placed me in the house of my father. Came to me. I gave over to his charge ten slaves. Suter, the commissioner of the king, came to me. I gave over to Suter's charge twenty-one girls, eighty prisoners, as a gift for the king, my lord. May the king give thought to his land. The land of the king is lost. All of it has attacked me. I am at war as far as the land of Suryu and as far as Jinti Kermil. All the mares are at peace, but I am at war. I am treated like an ape Hiru, and I do not visit the king, my lord, since I am at war. I am situated like a ship in the midst of the sea. The strong hand arm of the king took the land of Naruma and the land of Kazi. But now the ape Hiru have taken the very cities of the king. Not a single mare remains to the king, my lord, all are lost. Behold, Tobeza was slain in the city gate of Silu. The king did nothing. Behold, servants who were joined to the Apiru smote Zimrida of Lakusu, and Yatihada was slain in the city gate of Silu. The king did nothing. Why has he not called them to account? May the king provide for his land and may he see to it that archers come out to his land. If there are no archers this year, all the lands of the king, my lord, are lost. They have not reported to the king that the lands of the king, my lord, are lost and all the mares lost. If there are no archers this year, may the king send a commissioner to fetch me, me along with my brothers, and then we will die near the king, our lord. To the scribe of the king, my lord, message of Abdi Haba, your servant. I fall at your feet. Present the words that I have offered to the king, my lord, I am your servant and your son. Say to the king, My lord, message of Abdi Haba, your servant. I fall at the feet of my lord, the king, seven times and seven times. Milkalu does not break away from the sons of Labayu and from the sons of Asawa, as they desire the land of the king for themselves. As for a mayor who does such a deed, why does the king not call him to account? Such was the deed that Milkalu and Dagi did, they took Ubatu. And now as for Jerusalem. If this land belongs to the king, why is it not of concern to the king like Hatsatu? Jintu Kermil belongs to Targi, and men of Jintu are the garrison in Bitsnu. Are we to act like Labayu when he was giving the land of Sakmu to the Hapiru? Milkalu has written to Targi and the sons of Labayu, be the both of you a protection. Grant all their demands to the men of Kiltu, and let us isolate Jerusalem. Adaya has taken the garrison that you sent in the charge of Haya, the son of Meh, he has stationed it in his own house in Hatsatu and has sent twenty men to Egypt. May the king, my lord, know that no garrison of the king is with me. Accordingly, as truly as the king lives, his Erpi official, Pu'eru, has left me and is in Hatsatu. May the king call this to mind when he arrives. And so may the king send fifty men as a garrison to protect the land. The entire land of the king has deserted. Send G.A. in Hama that he may know about the land of the king, my lord. To the scribe of the king, my lord, message of Abdi Haber, your servant. Offer eloquent words to the king, I am always, utterly yours. I am your servant. Say to the king, my lord, message of Abdi Haber, your servant. I fall at the feet of the king, my lord, seven times and seven times. Here is the deed against the land that Milkalu and Sardata did, against the land of the king, my lord. They ordered troops from Gazru, troops from Jintu, and troops from Kiltu. They seized Rubatu. The land of the king deserted to the Hapiru. And now, besides this, a town belonging to Jerusalem, Bitnin. Herta by name, a city of the king has gone over to the side of the men of Kiltu. 
May the king give heed to Abdi Haber, your servant, and send archers to restore the land of the king to the king. If there are no archers, the land of the king will desert to the Hapiru. This deed against the land was at the order of Milkalu and at the order of Sardatu, together with Jinti. So may the king provide for his land.